awareness right here with this program and that's just what's incredible so um, can I get a show of hands of all the kids that are in here that are ready to go to college there's a couple of them look at this nice all right way in the back let's see it I hear some yells good good that is great to hear uh, also college bound uh, awareness month is kick off in this ceremony right here uh, we want to say first of all thank you very much to the aquarium for letting us host this for a second time here as well and um, what a great event I mean just incredible event so um, I want to do one thing right now. I want to introduce to you um, somebody that is from the aquarium, and that is Kathy Schur. She is right here. She's the vice president of the external affairs for the aquarium. So can you please come up here and get, let us know exactly what it means to you and, and being with the aquarium and hosting such an event? Great. All right, round of applause for Kathy, please. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, you can do better than that. I used to teach school, so I want to hear a real good morning. Good morning. That was okay, but I think there's more energy in this room than that. Um, Tom mentioned I, I am the vice, I'm not John Racanelli, who is not here today, and uh, I am lucky enough to be able to be the one that gets to greet you. Uh, I've been at the aquarium for many, many years since it opened, and some of you parents or grandparents might be old enough to know how long that really is, but I've stopped admitting that so people can figure out my age. But I have loved my career at the aquarium here, and I am very happy to, to greet you today. Um, one of my roles that I do as Vice President of External Affairs is I often talk to groups about what it's like to be working at the aquarium and what the aquarium means to the community. And I was reading a lot of the essays up at the top of the room when I came in, and I saw lots of uh, essays talking about what college meant to the students. And they were thinking about being teachers or doctors or lawyers or business people. But I didn't see that many people, many students say they might want to work at the aquarium someday. <laughs> Or they might like to work with 15,000 animals every day. Or they might want to take care of the animals. Or they might want to make sure that all these wonderful animals that we have here at the aquarium will have a home, will always have a home here in the state of Maryland. The environment will be clean and safe and protected. And it takes people to take care of the animals. And it takes people to take care of their homes and students. So my real job here today, in addition to welcoming all the wonderful parents and the students and congratulating you all for the great work you do, is to challenge you to think about a career as a biologist or environmentalist or someone who loves animals and wants to take care of them and show them off to their friends and families and to the community. And I hope that when you graduate from college, you come back here, and you speak to a group like this, and you tell the people that the day you came here for your college-bound presentation that you really decided you were going to be one of the people that took care of the animals and the environment. I thank you all for coming, and I appreciate your spending the time with us. I hope you all get a chance to look around and see some of the wonderful exhibits while you're here. And with that, Thank you all, and I'm going to turn it back over to Tom. Thank you for coming. All right. So we have, um, we have a large group here today. Thank you very much for, again for coming out. Thank you, Kathy, for those remarks, too. And uh, let's see. Maybe we'll get some more aquarium employees over here after they finish college, right? So um, I want to hear from anybody that uh, knows about college. Any of the students that are out here, what, tell me about College Bound. Can anybody raise your hand and tell me what is College Bound? What does it mean? Come on, you guys have done some uh, different articles here of art, poetry, lots of different things here on what college means to you. Is there anybody out here that feels like they want to share? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Finishing what you started. That's a very good answer. Thank you very much. Young man back there in the striped sweater.
Getting smarter. Okay, that's right. Learning more experiences. Anybody else? Anybody from this side? Yes, young lady. Moving further, advancing in life, moving further in life. Very good answers. That's it. Now, let me tell you a little bit about College Bound, because this event, we want you to talk to your friends and your family about this event right here. So let me tell you a little bit about what College Bound is. College Bound is a local, nonprofit community that is helping you, helping your friends, helping your families to tr achieve the goal of getting to college so that you can advance in life, learn more, get smarter, right, and finish your goals. These are the things that this uh, College Bound non Profit local community is helping us do. So I want to get a round of applause just for the staff from College Bound for allowing this for us here. Okay, and as you heard uh, Miss Kathy share talking about some of the entries, I mean, it is pretty amazing. She listed off some of the different uh, professions that you can go into, what you can do, and the excitement behind it just from your entries. And uh, we'll, we will be sharing a little bit with them in just a little bit. But first, I want to say that uh, college seems like it may be a long time off. Parents, I know you know it's going to be quicker than you can even imagine, right? The kids keep growing up faster and faster. Students out there, you're thinking college is so far away. It comes, and I, I heard this growing up my whole life, and it's one of those events where you're just going, ah, you don't realize it until you're in it. It's already here, and it's gone. And some of us that have already finished college may want to even, man, I could have gone back and done something a little bit different, maybe twerk something else. So it goes by fast, and it's really important to stay focused on the goal to go there, and you know that. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. So uh, for the future doctors, the future administrators, anybody out there, set that goal, stay with it, and uh, it, you'll be rewarded more than you can even explain or put on words. Well, I want to tell you something else. We have a surprise for you today. May, some of you may have noticed she came in just a little bit ago. Uh, our own local mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, is here. And before she comes up, I want to tell you that she is directors of College Bound. She is one of the, on the chair and on the staff. She is also a graduate of Western High School as well, Oberlin College and in Ohio, and the University of Maryland Law School. So can you please put your hands together for Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am so pleased to be here with all of you. I just got to visit another school this morning and to, and to visit with more students. And I am starting the day off right. I want to thank Eileen um, Mackle, Aileen Mackle and her team from BB&T and Jen Jennifer Byers and the team from Leg Mason for helping with judging the essay contest. I also want to uh, thank Baltimore City Schools, the teachers, the parents, uh, for encouraging participation in College Bound. And I want to thank Dr. Sauls, uh, the chair of the Baltimore City uh, School uh, Board, for being here and for your support of this effort. She understands how important it is to engage and encourage our young people to start to think about college and their future earlier and earlier. And I also want to thank uh, Jimmy Tadlock, the interim executive director of College Bound. So it is a pleasure, as I mentioned, for me to see some of the youngest scholars in uh, College Bound to talk about uh, the importance of college and the, uh, how it's never really too early to start to think about it. College was so important to me for so many reasons. I was thinking about it as I, um, as I was coming over here, and I was trying to think when was the earliest time I, when was the earliest I started to think about college, and I was very uh, blessed in the sense that my parents, uh, they were uh, encouraging us at a very early age to think about what we wanted to do and to think about where we wanted to, to go to college. And I also had an older sister, which helped as well, uh, because you know it's, it's always easier when you have a pathway and you can see what's coming, uh, coming down the road for you. And I, I couldn't remember the earliest I thought about it, and what I realized is I couldn't ever think about a time where I, I didn't know that college was in my future. And that's what I think College Bound is doing for our youngest scholars, uh, making sure that they don't have a, a sense or a time that they don't ever remember college being a part of potential, you know, and in, in a, a, a future pathway for them. And it's very, very important because the earliest you can figure out what your pathway is, the easier it is for you to stay on the right path. And that's what it's, uh, it's all about for me, trying to make sure that we keep as much, as many of our young people as possible on the right path and on their path uh, for success. I loved um, and 
the, uh, well, I didn't love preparing for college and the applications because that can be really tough. But after that's over and you get to go, I really enjoyed it. I, have a, I had a, a wonderful time. I learned a lot. I got to, you know, if in college, if you go away and uh, stay on campus, you get to learn not just in the classroom, but you get to learn about yourself and your interests. And I made lifelong friendship. Some of the best friends I have I, I made uh, in college and, and in law school. Uh, so when you think about that, when you think about how fun it is when you know, have, you have your, your friends at school, when you think about you know, being away and experiencing you know, all of those things together, it really creates strong bonds and it, it gives you something to be excited about. So I hope all of you are excited about the possibilities for your future. I, I like to ask uh, students when I go uh, and visit the schools, does it, do any of the young people know what they want to be when they grow up? So I'm going to ask the young people here, does anybody here know what they want to be when they, I knew you would in your nice tie. What do you want to be when you grow up, sir? Oh, that's wonderful. I would have been an excellent patient for you. I've had you, you, cavities for days. You've been, you, I'd have kept you in business. Yes, right behind. A neurosurgeon. We have a lot of good uh, history in uh, Baltimore with uh, neurosurgery, right in the pink stripe. A veterinarian, very, very important, right here in the middle. A football player, lovely, right over here. Man, we have a lot of people that are into science. I love that, especially our young women right here behind you. A sci I love it. Scientist right here. In the pink, yes, you. Wonderful. What type of artist? Painting, sculpture. You know what? You want painting or sculpture or? That's very nice up here. That's so special. My mom is a retired pediatrician, so I, I grew up in the house with a, a pediatrician. Pediatricians are very caring people, very smart and very caring. So that's a wonderful uh, profession. Right here in the back, and then I'm going to go all the way up here. Right here, yeah. A lawyer. Wonderful. You know, that's what I am as well. Do you like to argue? <laughs> Do you like to be right? Are you committed to being right? All right, you were well on your way. All the way back here is the ponytail on top. Wonderful. Do you know what type of doctor? Fantastic. You know this is the, we have the best hospitals in the world right here in Baltimore. Young man with the iPad is going to be my last one. Wonderful. An astronomer. We have all these scientists. I feel good about the future of our city when I get to hear all these young people so positive uh, and committed uh, to their success. I want to thank you for sharing with me this morning. I think I get to stay up on stage because we're going to do the awards again. Thank you for having me. and want to thank the aquarium for hosting. Don't you love the aquarium? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy you, would love, you would love to see one of the little girls. I said, don't you love the aquarium? She said, yes. <laughs> That's how I feel about the aquarium, too. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the mayor is correct. If we can have uh, Dr. Souls come up here for please. And we also have Doc, uh, Mr. Jimmy Padlock. Would you be able to assemble here on stage with us? And also Kathy Sherr. Could you please come up for us? Uh, real quick, we want to try to make sure we have a photo opportunity here with our uh, dignitaries here on stage. So if you could pull up the screen. Are we got, Lou, do we need to cut the lights too? OK. So we want to assemble right over here for us, please. Sure. Yeah, we're actually going to have you guys. There's a handsome gentleman in the middle there. And then the, the students are going to come up and we're going to work with the students after the back side. Make your way. Yes, please. If you can make your way over there. All right. Once we get some lights on you guys right there, you look great. Look at that. All right. Round of applause right here for the people that made this happen. Okay. Now the students. Anybody that is a winner here, you've been told, could you please come up to the platform for us? We want to make sure we get a group photo here with our dignitaries and also our students coming up. Thank you very much.
Okay, now if you guys can group, come together like you know each other. Right here. We're going to get right up to the front here. This red shoulder in the front. Oh. Can you tell me right here? Tell the kids in the back just like what we do with family uh, picnics, right? Do you mind coming right in here, Christian? Thank you very much. There you go. And everybody up on the stage? Can I make it? All right, you need to come right behind me. Young lady with the tiara, can I have you come forward, sir, with the vest? Can I have you switch places with her? Quickly. There we go. Serve the glasses. Come over. Over this right. way. Over this right way. Right in here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Everybody look at me. Young lady, slide back. No, slide back. Slide back, slide back, slide back. Cheese, smile. Okay. Everybody at me? Everybody at me? I see everybody. Can everybody see me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> three, two, one at me. One more. Three, two, one at me. Excellent. And last one, just to make sure we have everybody smiling. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Now, everyone stay because you guys need to stay on the platform real quick. So what I need you to do, if students, if you could back up just a little bit where you are, and just step back a little bit, because we need to have a path right here. So take about four steps back. And then I'm going to make the announcements. Now, when I do make the announcements real quick for us here, I want to make sure that everyone knows that once I do each topic, I'm going to wait. If you can, hold your applause, please, until the end of the group. There's three students each time. And then if you can give them a round of applause together, that would be, that would be great. And it would help us speed this up a little bit longer. Now, if a dignitary, could you please come over here with me just a little bit? If you can make yourselves out here. Way over this side. We'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. So now students are going to start with K through 12. So whenever you hear your name, we're going to walk right over here. Make sure that you stop. Shake hands with everybody. Stop. Turn around. Take a photo with your parents. And maybe the mayor will present you your award. And then we're going to walk off that side of the stage. Right over there. See, there's a lady waving for us over there, too. We're going to walk back over there, okay? Once you get your award. All right, so let's start. We'll, I want to start with, first with art. The art department right here. We have grades kindergarten through second grade. And we have Aiden Moyd is our third place winner from, third place winner from Leith Walk Elementary. Right there, big smile. Big smile, Aiden. Look, look at me, ready? Three, two, one. Nice, one. nice. Yeah. ah, great smile. In second place, we have Ashlyn Abney, also from Leaf Walk Elementary. And our first place winner for grades K through 12, we have Tori Hughes from Leaf Walk Elementary. Now, Art. There you go. What are you doing? Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, I got a hug. Can you get this from the, from the mayor, right? Good job, Tori. And then step right over here. Stop right there. Good job, Tori. Simon says take a half step that way. There we go. I'll help you up right here. Okay, and we're going to lower this down right here. Big smiles, ready? Okay, everybody take your pictures. Good, look, look at me, look at me, look at me, smiles. Yeah, all right. Now we're going to move on to um, art, grades three through five right here. And what we want you to do is we're going to, again, go through third, second, and first place. We have Taylin Richardson from Gardenville Elementary and third place winner in our art department. Perfect, 
Okay, look at me, big smile, big smile, chug the bowl, really good. Okay, everybody, look at me, big smile, three, two, one. Excellent. Thank you very much. And in second place, we have Deanna Jones from Leaf Walk Elementary. And our first place winner for arts grade three through five, we have Reagan Jennings from Leaf Walk Elementary. Alrighty, in grades six through eight, we have Jalen Lashley, third place winner from Falstaff Elementary Middle School. Right over there, thank you very much. Politician right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jalen. Okay, we have Roland Lopez. Roland Lopez, Falstaff Elementary Middle School, second place winner in arts, grades six through eight. Okay, everyone at me, please. Everyone at me. Ready? Three, two, one. Big smile. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, a round of applause for all the winners in our art category. Thank you very much. Now I want to move on to our essay, and we're going to start again with kindergarten through second graders there. We have Jaden Ridgway. Jaden Ridgway is our third place winner in our essay category from Leaf Walk Elementary. Thank you very much. And I apologize, I miss Shaitria. Shaitria, please come up forward here. Shaitria Trism, you please come forward. No, not here? Okay. Maybe, all right. There you go. I knew it. Premonition. Okay, so we have, we're going back to essays, and we have Kamari Barbie. Kamari Barbie, our second place winner from Leaf Walk Elementary School. Kamari. Kamari wasn't here. Okay, our first place winner from kindergarten through second grade, Kara Johnson from Hamden Elementary School. First place. Moving on to our third through fifth grade essay winners, we have Raja Mia, third place from Cross Country Elementary. Our second place winner in essays grades three through five is Christian Taylor from Leaf Walk Elementary, second place. And our first place winner in essays, grade three through five, we have Courtney Jacobs III from Gwen Falls Elementary. <laughs> Moving on to our third essay department is grade six through eight. We have Rose Shamari from Marie Garnet Faring Elementary School. That's the third place winner. And in second place, we have Rawata Saeed from Kip Ujami, uh, Ujima, Ujima El Village Academy. That's second place winner. And our first place winner is uh, Tayana Walker from Cross Country Elementary and Middle School. Excellent. 
And a collective round of applause for everyone that won our essays. Thank you. Our final category is poetry. So again, I want to start with kindergartners through second grade. Third place winner is Taylor Carter from Leith Walk Elementary School. In second place, we have Kennedy Wise from Leith Walk Elementary. And our first place winner from Poetry in Case through second grade is Tiana Giddens. Tiana Giddens from Leaf Rock Elementary. All right, our poetry grades three through five. We have Alexandria Hargrave, our third place winner from Leaf Walk Elementary. And we have a special announcement that our next winner is our second place winner. She's actually turns 11 today. So we have two reasons to celebrate. And that is Alasia Thomas from Leaf Walk Elementary. How did I ever guess it was her birthday? All right, and our first place winner from poetry, grade three through five, is Darius Holmes from Leaf Walk Elementary. Okay, in our final category of poetry, grades six through eight, we have Inkemba Gamba from Connections, and that's third place winner. Okay, we also have second place Sadrine. Nevi from Leith Walk Elementary, second place winner. Perfect. Just gotta turn your there you go. And our final winner for today, we have DeAndre White from the Stadium School, first place in poetry, grade six through eight. Thank you very much. And please, a round of applause for the mayor, for Dr. Sauls. And uh, Kathy Schur, thank you very much, you. and Jimmy Tadlock as well. And I also want to have Dr. Sauls, if you could stay with me really quick up here. I want to have you uh, stay here. Um, I also want to thank, uh, we also have Brandon Scott, who is in. Councilman Brandon Scott is here with us today. Can we give a round of applause for him right over here with us as well? Thank you very much for attending this. Uh, okay, so right now I wanted to um, introduce to you Dr. Sauls, and she has some remarks exactly about what this means for us and what College Bound is uh, all about. So if you please give me a round of applause for Dr. Sauls. Good morning. Morning parents, future college graduates. Uh, as I think about your essays and your poems and your artwork, I'm reminded how much I love college. I love college. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I've spent most of my career in higher education. I am a college professor. Uh, so uh, many of you, as you work hard, as part of your parents, you'll have an opportunity to take classes with college professors. And they're not nearly as mean as I am purported to be. Just kidding. Uh, so you know, as I think about what the title of the essay, Poetry and Art Contest, uh, means, 
terms of what college means to me. Um, I feel, um, as someone who spent her life on college campuses, um, a graduate of the University of Maryland and of Duke University, um, that I wanted to, to sort of provide a few tips as you think about the pathway forward. So first, college really is good, as they say it is, and it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, the mayor was absolutely right. Not only will you have an opportunity to learn things that you want to learn, because you're taking classes that you want to take, uh, you're going to meet people who will be your friends forever. Um, uh, the place where I attended, um, I have college friends who I may not speak to for weeks or months, but as soon as I pick up the phone, it's just as if it's back to when we were 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, you will never forget those relationships, whether they are here, they are away, they're in another country. Um, you have, you'll meet people who come from all different areas. They'll come from um, Baltimore, from Maryland, from New York, from California, from other countries, and they're all so different, and you're all in it together. Uh, so you absolutely love it. Um, second, don't believe the naysayers. College is still worth it, and it remains the very best investment that you can make in your life. So take $100, right? We'll all find $100. I don't have much these days. I have three children. Uh, so my husband and I, we don't have much, <laughs> much money, but take $100. Put that $100 in a piggy bank. Ten years from now, what are you going to have? $100 if you don't dip into it to buy, you know, cookies or iPods or whatever it is that, you know, we're buying. So ten years from now, you have $100. Take that same $100 and you put it towards a car. In 10 years, what do you have? Not nearly as much. The adults in the room know that as soon as you drive that car off the lot, it depreciates or it loses its value within an instant. 10 years from spending that $100 towards a car, you're lucky if you still have that car. And if you do have that car, by the time you spend money on repairs and tires and this and that, you may actually have negative the money that you put into it. Now, you take that $100 and you put it towards yourself. Invest in you. That is, invested in a college education. 10 years from now, you have put yourself on a path to make 100 times the amount of money. It is true that the investment in a college education pays off at least 100 times over the course of your lifetime. Example, you put in $20,000 to pay for a college degree at the end of your lifetime, you would have made $2.1 million. It is still the very best thing that you can do for yourself. It's better than a car. It's better than a piggy bank. It's better than a, a savings account. It's better than a house even. Invest in yourself. That $100 is well worth the investment. Never forget that. And I'm speaking not only to my future college graduates, but I'm speaking to the parents. All right? do, do not believe what they say. College is still the best thing for um, each and every one of us to live a life of success and happiness. Third tip, there is a college for you. The extraordinary thing about colleges in this country is that there's a college for everyone. They're big colleges, small colleges, public. I went to a big public school, University of Maryland, go Terps. Uh, there's small uh, public schools. Uh, there are colleges in every state. Uh, they're two-year colleges, they're four-year colleges, they're schools that specialize in engineering, that specialize in architecture, that specialize in art, that specialize in nursing, that uh, specializes in being a pharmacist. So in this country, there's a college for everyone. Just find yours. Okay? And the fourth tip, um, and I want to address the parents specifically. So there was a student who uh, attended city schools, very bright, very smart, very capable, um, she comes to her senior year, and she graduates in May, and we come to find out that this student is not going to college. The reason why that she cited was that she didn't want to go. We know that's not true, because in the fall of her senior year, she filled out her applications, she wrote and rewrote her essays, and she submitted her applications. She didn't do one thing. She did not complete her FAFSA, her Federal Application for Financial Student Aid. I think that's right, right? <laughs> federal Application for Financial Student Aid. The reason that she didn't do it is because she did not want to subject her parents to having to tell her how much money he made. So she gets to May, she gets to June, she's not going to college. 
Why? Because she didn't fill in her FAFSA form. She got accepted to college. She got some money for merit, for making good grades and for her hard work, but she didn't have enough money to go. Fortunately for this student, her middle school teachers and principals found out. They rallied using their college networks, and they were able to pull together with this college to come up with a financial aid package so that she could go. She's now a junior in college, and she's well on her way to making the investment of a lifetime. Now, I hate this story. Why? Because she was one we caught. We caught her. But there's so many students who we won't catch, all because of something simple. The fact that the FAFSA form is so intimidating. I don't care what level of education you have. I don't care how much money you have. The FAFSA is an incredibly daunting document. Do not let that be the reason, all right? Think about it in the same way that you think about your tax forms. You have to file every year. That same information that you're compiling every April 15th is a lot of the same information that they need for you to fill out that student aid form. Please do not allow filling out that form to be the reason that your child does not go to college. Not only does the federal government and the state government use that to make a decision about the kinds of grants and loans that will be available to you, but the colleges that I work with every day also use that form to make determinations about the aid, that, the money that they're going to put forward for your students. All right? So if I can't leave you with anything else, college is worth it. <laughs> um, it's still the best investment that you can make. There's a college for each and every one of you. And fourthly, fill out the FAFSA, Federal Application for Financial Student Aid. It is worth it. Please don't forget it. We know more than anyone else that it's up to us as parents to make sure that we provide these opportunities for our children. Don't let our pride or what we think um, um, is information that's too personal that will end up closing a door that we want to make it available for our students, all right? So on that happy note, <laughs> let me just say it's been my pleasure to address you this morning. Um, I know that I stand with all the adults in the room that we're absolutely proud of you. I look forward to seeing so many future scientists, lawyers, doctors, um, and the next creators of whatever phones and televisions and internet, whatever it is that we're gonna be using 20, 30 years from now. So you all have a lovely day. I know that I'm standing in the way of a very important feature film, so I'm about to step out of the way and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Dr. Sauls, uh, Chairman of the uh, Board of Commissioners right here as well um, for the Board of School Commissioners. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for her. And I want to ask uh, also um, Jimmy, if you would be able to stand here. Jimmy Tadlock, he's the Interim Executive Director for the Director of College Bound. If he could stay on the stage for us, because we do have two late, the two names that we called out, they actually showed up. We have three names. I have, uh, I have two names up here for us. So we'll have to, we'll play this by ear. But uh, so I want to bring those winners that were able to make it in for us real quick. If you can come up on stage with us real quick, that would be great. We'd appreciate that. So those winners are Kamari Barbie and Shaitria Chisholm. If you can please come up on stage. Can you stand right up here in front of us? Thank you very much for coming. Stand right up in front, Dr. Saul. Thank you very much. Okay, Camry Barbary is the SA winner from second from kindergarten to second grade, second place winner right here from Leith Walk Elementary. Thank you very much. Can you hold this up? And look right there at that camera. And we also have Shaitria Chisholm, who is an art winner in art. She's a first place winner from sixth to eighth grade. So thank you very much for coming. She's from Paul Staff Elementary Middle School. Please hold that up. Thank you again. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, Jimmy Tadlock, we have to get a couple more bags over here. If you guys can leave the stage right there, they have the gift for you. And now, Mr. Jimmy Tadlock, Interim Executive Director of College Bound, and an exciting announcement about a movie I hear. Thank you. Thank you. If we can get another round of applause for all of our 27 winners for this year's contest. And a form of applause, uh, we like to make sure we thank um, Tom Rogers and the team from Fox 45, Dr. Sauls, 
chair of the school um, uh, board of commissions, Baltimore City Public Schools, the staff at um, the aquarium. And if I can also ask the specialists from College Bound to stand up, please. The specialists. So parents, I'd like for you to make sure you look at the faces of those that are waiting to serve your children once they step onto uh, the campuses of high school because they can hopefully help avoid some of the problems that Dr. Sauls just mentioned about students finding a hard time finding aid they need to go to college. And um, lastly, before we introduce the film, uh, you know, each year, Leith Walk Elementary has a, a large contingent of participants in this activity. And you should know, college-bound staff, we don't grade the poems and the essays. We have volunteers to do that. And to have so many winners from Leith Walk says a lot about the teachers and the leadership at Leith Walk. So if I can have the principal from Leith Walk, just stand up. So without further ado, you're in for a special treat, a 4D IMAX film that someone is going to give you some instructions on how to best enjoy this experience. And at the conclusion of the film, you'll have an opportunity, parents, to take a few pictures next to your children's artwork in the back, and you will also be able to enjoy the rest of the museum. So we can have someone come. Thank you.